I woke up to Dogman in my bedroom. Dear Scary Stories NYC, I woke up to Dogman in my bedroom looking down at me in bed. I'm not going to pretend like there was any warning that he was even in the neighborhood. I had no idea that Dogman was real. And then I woke up to look into the glowing eyes of one. He snarled at me threateningly, and I averted my eyes. But there I was, trapped in bed, trying not to make eye contact with a huge, smelly, ape-like, upright-walking dog who somehow was in my bedroom in the middle of the night. I've never seen a man with such wide shoulders. It was like he was wearing those football player shoulder guards. That's how huge his shoulder muscles were. This did not appear to be a human in a costume, as even in the darkness I could see the muscles tense and relax as he continued to smash and shatter all the things I treasured most in the world. In the dark, the creature's eyes looked like little glow-in-the-dark Aurora Monster model parts from the 1960s. I know about those because my uncle gave me his Phantom of the Opera glow-in-the-dark model, and the dogman destroyed it on that night. This was not a Sasquatch. It was neither like a man nor like an ape. It was a dog, but it was a dog that stood like a man. A dog with hands, with claws, with two legs to stand on. It was not a bear, and it was not a man. It was a canine of some sort, maybe a wolf, maybe a German shepherd. But it was of a crazy size, and it was black all over, everywhere. Now, I don't live in the city, but I don't live in the country either. I hesitate to mention my town name because I'm hoping this was a fluky, one-and-done kind of situation. There are a few other houses on my block, but we're all set back from the road behind some trees. We do see deer and coyote from time to time, but I've never heard of anyone having an animal invasion before. From the reading I've been doing, most people who are forced into a confrontation with this dogman animal never see it again for the rest of their lives. It's just such a rare creature that I'm hoping the safest place I can be is right here, since the chance of a dogman visiting the same home more than once are so infinitesimally small. Nevertheless, I've never been able to completely get that wet dogman smell out of the house since it came here. I even had one of my dates comment on the odor, and I know she didn't believe me when I said it was the fault of the dogman. It was so stupid for me to let her into my confidence when I hadn't known her long enough. Now she's going around telling people that I'm crazy. And maybe I am. After all, I'm the guy who claims he woke up and there was some eight or nine foot tall upright walking dog-headed monster man wandering around his room at 2 or 3 a.m. The dog man went through my laundry, pulling out random articles of clothing, which he held up in front of him and seemed upset about. He would growl at the clothing, then at me, then at the clothing, and after that, he'd tear whatever it was to shreds. He seemed to find my clothes to be a personal affront against him. When he got to my underwear drawer, he was so horrified by what he discovered that he pulled the entire drawer out and slammed it into a wall. Sometimes people laugh when I tell them this story, as though it would be funny to have a hairy prehistoric giant in your room, screaming in agony and pain about your personal belongings. I can assure both you and that creature that I never purchased any article of clothing with the intent of insulting the dogman. In fact, I never knew there was such a thing as the dogman until I googled the creature after this confrontation in my own bedroom. 
So, you know, I have had sleep paralysis, and it was not like this. When I had that, I was unable to move, and I was forced to watch as a hooded woman touched me all over my body. It was a horrible experience, maybe just as horrible as this one, but the difference between the two was that this time I was fully awake. I could move if I wanted to. It's just that I didn't want to. I wanted that upright walking dog to stop messing with my stuff. I wanted that canine-headed Sasquatch to move on out of my room and go bother someone else. But there was nothing I could do as one by one, the creature picked up each of my treasured belongings and memories of my past. And then, screaming and bellowing at me, he angrily trashed them. I have no idea what meaning he was trying to convey, or if he was just a panicked animal who stumbled into my house by accident. But it felt like I was being shouted at, about my own life, my own past. It felt like he was criticizing everything I'd ever done, everything I'd ever believed in, everything I'd ever hoped. It felt like he wanted to shout at me about every single thing that ever mattered to me and every single person I'd ever loved. Photos of loved ones living and gone lay smashed all over the floor. My TV set had a high school bowling trophy smashed into its screen. One of my stereo speakers had been thrown through a window which now had a large hole in the center of it. And meanwhile, the creature was still raging, still picking things up and screaming at me about them. When he finished destroying my room, I expected him to go through my closet next, but instead the beast walked out and down the hallway toward the stairwell. I found my slippers and realized just a second before putting them on that they were filled with shards of broken glass as well. The dogman had really made a mess of everything. I needed to know what he was going to destroy next. Peeking out into the hallway, I watched as the incredibly tall man thing, taller than any human being who I've ever seen, walked calmly down the stairs like a gentleman even holding on to the rail as he walked. When he reached the bottom, he then simply walked out my front door, which was wide open and swinging in the night breeze. After the dogman left my house, I ran downstairs and locked the door behind him. Running around, I found no other doors or windows opened. It seemed that the front door was how the creature got in. But how had the door become open? How had it even become unlocked? I grew up in a city, and I'm careful to always lock everything I own. I am certain that front door was closed and locked, and I don't even have half a clue how the door got opened, or how the creature was able to stroll on inside and say hello. Another thing that I discovered upon inspection was that no other room in the entire house seemed to have been vandalized. The creature somehow got through and opened the front door, then knew to come up to my bedroom and no place else. It didn't even go for the food in the kitchen. I had left over ham in the fridge that I bet an animal like the dogman would find delicious. It was left undisturbed. My underpants were all torn to shreds, but the sliced meat waiting for him in the kitchen was exactly as I had left it. I've been reading all I can find about the dogman since that seems to have been what walked into my house on that night. I can't find other stories where things went down the way they went down for me though. I don't see stories where the dogman strikes out against one single person in an act of vengeance. That's why I've started to wonder about something even stranger than this story already is. What if... That wasn't a dogman that broke into my house that night. What if it was a werewolf? I know that sounds insane because who believes in werewolves in 2022? But hear me out. That creature or entity behaved like someone with a purpose. He came 
did what he wanted to do, and then left. He didn't trash any room except my bedroom. The whole thing seemed so personal. You know, I do have some enemies that go way back in my life. Guys who never liked me, and just never will. Anytime I'm happy, they're angry. When I succeed, they feel as though they failed. They hate me deep down with all their guts. I can list probably three guys that I know of who hate me on that level. It's possible there are some more guys who can't stand me that I don't even know about yet. I'm fairly successful, and success breeds jealousy. So what if one of the guys who are jealous of my success got bitten by a werewolf, or however you become a werewolf outside of the movies? What if one of my enemies is a werewolf? Well, then I suppose if that's true, that I should be grateful he only took his wrath out on my personal belongings and clothing. You know, he never laid a hand on me myself. I've had additional locks added to my doors since this happened. But if whoever that was could open one lock, why wouldn't they be able to open two or three? I've been extra careful with my perceived enemies since then, but nobody's dropped a clue that they know about any of this. I have no more information now than I did before the incident happened. All I know is that I lost a little bit of confidence, and I lost a little bit of my self-assuredness on the night when I woke up to Dogman in my bedroom. Our executive producer is Paul Essery. So smart he could beat me in a game of chessery. He's a badass, and that's not all. We all owe some thanks to our benefactor, Paul. Please join me in thanking today's executive producer, Paul Essery, for making this episode possible. In exchange, we share all our perks with Mr. E, including our weekly secret uncensored Dogman stories, our over 21 hours of archived secret uncensored Dogman stories, as well as our previews of future episodes whenever possible. And you can share all these perks too. Just either join our PayPal subscribers club at peterbernard.com or else do what Paul Essery did and become a Scary Stories channel member by clicking that join link under this or any of our videos. And now to explain the details I've left out, here's international TV spokesmongrel Henry Lee Dogman. Hank? Thanks for watching till the end. If you liked what you saw, please consider clicking like on the video or sharing it with your friends and family that you think might also be interested. If you would like to see more of our work, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon next to the subscribe button so that YouTube will alert you when we put out a new video. To become a channel member and gain access to our special perks, you can click that join link under each of our videos. Another option is to join our PayPal subscribers club at peterbernard.com. You can join for as little as 99 cents on YouTube or a buck 50 at peterbernard.com and that gains you access to our weekly secret uncensored episodes. If you'd like to see our 21 hours of archives of uncensored Dogman stories, then please join at the $3 level or above. To get to watch our shows in advance of the public, please join at our $10 level. That gets you all the perks. If you join our channel memberships, you need to check our community page here on YouTube in order to get the links to the secret videos and other perks. If you're in the PayPal Subscribers Club, Peter will email you all the news and links himself. Once joining the PayPal Club, which is Peter's homemade club, please give him a chance to see that you've joined and to compose you a personal welcome email, as none of that is automated. But whichever you join, we'll name you an executive producer for the next available episode. Do you have a scary experience that you'd like to share with us? You can email us at scarystoriesnyc at gmail.com or call our Scary Stories voicemail hotline at 804-LA-SCARY. That's 804-537-2279. It's a Google voicemail box, so that means it keeps cutting off after every three minutes. If your story is longer than that, please keep calling back 
and we can piece it together on our end. Good night, and have a scary tomorrow. Come back for more scary stories.